Hello fellow citizens, uh, Nero here, just uh, <laughs> I had to make a comment on Valungu uh, Akateka Besu, this news, this comment that he made in, uh, in, uh, in uh, when he went to Western, I think it was in Choma, where he said, no, don't just, he was referring to um, HH, don't just boast about don't don't just post that you are rich. You are a rich Tonga bull. Help government build palaces. This is the this is this is the, this is foolish. First, as many of you have observed by yourselves, it is not the responsibility of any citizen to help government. Why should you be helping government? Eh? If 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 government Tutila, what am I leaders? Gabala and the Mokot Monokati Fiamano. Let me remind everybody that since this man became president of Zambia, he has never said anything sensible. He has never said anything that really makes sense. Talan Dapo, he has never said anything inspirational, especially during times of crisis, such as you, such as you, 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 you citizens being cast. He's never said anything. Meaningful, any, he has never said anything, uh, you know, uh, consoling. He has never said anything um, uh, motivating. He has, he has never said anything empowering. He has never said anything that resembles any utterances of a leader. Since perhaps from the very moment, from the first time, let me tell you something about him. From the very first time that he, this man spoke. From the very first time that I heard this man speak, generally, like example, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, I think, uh, even him, uh, he, he, he wanted to cut up a child uh, so he could find out who the, who the real mother was. And uh, the moment he said that, just the way he said it, he said that, just the way he said it, from that moment, then all the whole Zambia rose at new to lay fire. That I'll, I'll never forget. That it, it boggles the mind that, that we, the people of Zambia, create such create problems of such magnitude for for ourselves. It's it's mind boggling. But anyway, so he goes out and says, "This this this was posted on July 5. July 5, 2020. HH should help build palaces in his villages. Why? What foolishness is that? Why do you want to, to help government? You know, if you, let me, here, here. President, President Harry Galungu says, Tonga Bulls should not just go about boasting that they are rich when they are failing to improve the welfare of their traditional leaders in southern province. It goes on. It's a whole long article here. Before, 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 before I respond fully here, before I make a full comment, let me see. Uh, you know, one, just, just pick some of some of the stuff that he added. Um, if the forty-eight mansions without the owners had, in, okay, that, 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 that's that's uh, that's a response. But I want to I want to see his utterances here. I, I read it already, but I just wanted to read something back to you guys so we can have a basis for my. You can see what, what I'm basing my comment on. Um, you cannot be boasting in town that you are rich. You are rich, Tonga. You are Tonga bull. You have, you, you've got so much money, but why can't you spare a few to help your chief build a palace, buy a car? That is how we used to do, to do it in the past. What has, what has happened? Wondered Lungu. He wondered. Lungu wondered. First, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you guys something. According to Forbes, I think I've said this before. According to Forbes. Lungu is worth over four hundred million dollars, and that they attribute that worth to having 
the main shares in a number of top companies in Zambia. Being the top shareholder in a number of top companies in Zambia. That's, and other undisclosed sources of money. That's how they explain the worth of Mr. Lungu. Over 400 million US dollars, not Zimbabwe in dollars, US dollars. Just for a scale, the President of the United States, this was of 2018, just for a scale, President Barack Obama in, in the, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, President of the United States, and he was there for eight years. This, this guy has been in, in office for about six years in one of the poorest can, rated countries in the world. Poor in terms of rating because they measure the poverty levels of the people. Even though we have so much wealth, now you can understand where the wealth is. If one man can be worth more than $400 million, that was of, as of 2018. So, Barack Obama, as of 2018, worth approximately 40 million US dollars. So, this man is 10 times, more than 10 times richer, more wealthy than Barack Obama. And he is also more wealthy, far more wealthy than the last five or six or seven presidents, excluding uh, Donald Trump, seven presidents put together, presidents of the United States, all of them put together. He's worth more than that, far more worth than their combined worth. So here is the man now telling a private citizen, a, a citizen uh, to, to, to go and build palaces what, to help the government. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to see well, exactly. That, that's, where, that's, what it, that's what it says here. It says to help the government. <laughs> help the government. Um, let's see here. That's what it says. Yeah. So, yeah, he says, has, he has since... He has since called on citizens. Oh, this, this is Lungu. They're talking about Lungu. Wondered Lungu. However, Lungu charged providing decent accommodation for, tri for traditional leaders is not the responsibility of government alone. But every citizen as subject of respective chief, uh, chiefdoms. He has since called on citizens to help government complete the construction of palaces that have halted. While further recalling that subjects in the past used to take care of the welfare of their chiefs. Okay, let's go right there. We want to talk about the, the, sense, the, the, the senselessness of what this person says. Okay? Today is not long ago. And we, are, we have departed from that cultural trend we have departed from the country the whole country had departed has departed from that cultural trend why because of poor governance in zambia that's why first let me let me let me let me let me say this uh, let me talk about the concept of helping government the concept of helping government is foolish no one helps government. You can't be helping government. Why should you be helping the government to do what's mandated to do? The government is not just another entity. The government is instituted by the people in order to do those things that they cannot accomplish as individuals. That's what government is. So you can't do that. So when you institute government to do those things that you cannot accomplish individually, then you relinquish a small, a small percentage of your rights to the government and give it power 
so that it can do those things. Right? So, that power, part of that power that you have given the government is to collect taxes. To collect taxes so that it can have the means to do those things that you as a nation cannot, as citizens cannot accomplish in, as, uh, in, as individuals. Get what, I, get what I'm saying? You have given the government the power to collect taxes from you in order to accomplish those things you cannot individually. So why would you, what sense does it make for you to start helping the government? This is the foolishness that we have in Zambia. When, when you hear, wow, this man has donated to the government. Yeah, this so-and-so has donated so much, so many masks and all that stuff to the government. Why do you, why do you, no, it does not, it, it's foolishness to think you can donate to the government. You don't donate to the government. You don't help the government. You are the government. We the people are the government. If you, if you, there's such a thing as you are donating to the government, it means somebody's just stealing your money. They're already taking your taxes. They are already taking 37.5% of your income as pay as you earn. Wherever you go, whatever you buy, you pay 16% VAT, about 5% sales tax. You drive along a road, you pay toll gates. You buy gas or fuel, gasoline, petrol, whatever, whatever you, you were calling it these days. You pay fuel levy, you pay transport levy, you pay uh, road levy, you pay ERB levy, you pay traders' charges, all those things you pay. Whether you, buy, whether, whether you drive a car or buy fuel or, or not, you pay those things because the cost is passed on to you. Government collects all these things, all these things in order to do those things you cannot accomplish individually. I keep reminding everybody what government is, what the, the role of government is. So, why do you want, if it's the role of the government, why, why, should, why, should, why should you entertain the concept that you should be helping the government? You do not help government. You do not help government. Government is not just some entity that needs help. You don't help government. If the government is run with, by fools, then that's another issue. That's a problem. That's a problem, guys. You don't help government. There's no such thing as helping government. There is no such thing as helping government. Now, you can talk about collaborating with government. Yes, you collaborate with government in many aspects public-private partnerships. Those are collaborations. You know, you can carry out your own, you know, private development, such, such as, hey, hey, NGOs collaborate with the government. They coordinate with the government. All those organizations are coordinating with the government. They're not helping the government. They're just, you know, implementing their own programs, you know, uh, because... The government, because of the government's failure, that that those organizations are implementing their own uh, programs, is not is not help. It's not helping government. It's not we are here to help the government. No. It's the poverty has gone on so long. People are suffering. Where, where people are suffering. Where people are suffering, somebody comes in to help. Where people are suffering, whether it's the United Nations or any NGOs or any of these, the Catholic Church, all these, you know, all these entities, they can, they, they can, they come in because the people are so poor. That's why they come in. The people are so poor. They are not there to help the government. They are simply there to help the people. They are. In, 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 indirectly, yeah, they're doing the, 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 the government, the, the, the job that the government really should be doing. Because of stu stupidity, 
The government has failed to do that. So these organizations come in as a relief organization. You know, and they, they're just doing those things to really look, improve the plight of those poor people. So to, to, for a leader, for a leader to say, you should help, be helping government. There's nothing, there's something missing up here. There's something missing up here. It's not a, the responsibility on, of any citizen to help the government. Citizens don't help government. Government has the responsibility to empower, essentially to help. To help citizens. How does, it, that, that, how does it do that? It must be there to create the conducive framework, the proper framework that provides for opportunities, that provides for you know, growth potential, that provides for empowerment. And empowerment is not just like uh, somebody wakes up and says, you are empowered, we are going to give you 30,000 watchers. That's stupidity. Empowerment is creating the framework that, 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 that is there that it becomes automatic for any youth or citizen who has an idea, who has, uh, a, you know, any undertaking that they want to pursue. With reasonable success, with a, a reasonable expectation of success, and uh, to pursue their own happiness. Government is there to help them. And it, it, by providing that kind of environment, the proper economic environment, the proper political environment, the, 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 proper, the proper form of access, access to government services means I want to go and get a license. I don't have to drive all the way for 800 kilometers to just go and get, get a license for something. No, that's foolishness. The government has to be there to provide all these things. And it helps citizens by providing all these services. Okay, what do you want to do? I want to do this and this and this. The procedure is this and this and that. And it, uh, it, it, it has to be a, a, an efficient procedure. They hook you up with a certain license. Sure, if you fail to utilize the license or you misuse it, they can revoke the license. Because it, uh, it all has to be, uh, it has to be some regulations to some, some, some extent. You know. So, that is how it is. You don't say, okay, no, the government needs your help. What? That, that's foolishness. So coming back to, to HH, HH owes nothing to nobody. Okay? I am not a, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of HH myself. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not speaking here uh, about HH, you know, because I'm a fan of HH. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of HH. I don't believe HH is going to change Zambia. Um, or uh, end corruption or uh, bring any significant improvement to Zambia. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't think so. You know, but he's not responsible for anything. He's not responsible for building any foolish palace. You know, whatever riches he has, he has, he has done a lot for some people. I believe he has done a lot for some people. You know. But he, he has, is under no obligation to help anybody, to build any palace for anybody. Get that in your head. Yeah, HH or any other citizen is, no, is not obligated to do anything for, for, for a chief. So, so, having said that, when we were under uh, our own rule, no colonial rule, we before these white people came. We lived in chiefdoms, uh, in kingdoms. The, 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 the chief, the chief uh, thing was brought on by white people because they, they didn't want to, to, um, to make our kings comparable to the king of England. That's why they started to call our kings chiefs, and we have been stuck with that. Our kings, we were in kingdoms, the Bemba kingdom. We don't say the Bemba chiefdom. When we study history, it's the Bemba kingdom. It's the Lozi kingdom. The, uh, the, Luzu king, the Zulu kingdom. <laughs> See, we, when, you read your, when we read our history, when, when you, we study history in, uh, 
grade in, in our secondary school we don't we don't study the kingdom of the bemba uh, the chiefdom of the bemba we don't study the chiefdom of the bemba we study the kingdom of the bemba they were kings the, the white people came and said, no, they are not, no longer kings. We, we, we are not going to call them uh, kings anymore because that's too comparable to the king of England. They, these, these people cannot be equal. We, can, we, cannot, we, cannot, we cannot use the same title for this uh, third of a human, for this third of a human being uh, as we use for the, for, for the king of England. So they started to call them chiefs. Yeah. So when we were or you know, governing ourselves and all that stuff. We had a traditional structure that was premised on strong transcendent values, premised on strong, you know, uh, morals, you know, cultural, you know, very strong cultural, uh, cultural fab fabric uh, with a very strong traditional framework of um, from of, 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 of laws. Yeah, there were laws. There were traditional laws. You know, much of what has become custom, what we refer to as customary law, uh, customary law today, you know, that, that comes from that, from our tradition, of, from, from traditionally how we have done things, what was acceptable in our society. It has, it, it, it was been compiled into what we refer to as customary law. You know, so we had that shift. We were those, we had those kingdoms with hierarchical structures, and how did the king survive? Yeah, people paid homage because there was no other government during then. So people, you know, paid homage to the king. Uh, they would, they would bring animals, they would bring chicken, they would do all all that kind of stuff. The king, the, the, the chiefdom, in the sub, its subjects would build palaces and things like that for a king. You know? Some of them, sure, sure. Some of them, sure, had even tax, a taxation system. Some used uh, to some, there were some tax, tax collectors during that, that time, you know. But uh, it would be a chicken or something like that. Well, you know, and, and paying homage in, in some kingdoms where it was an expectation you have to pay homage to the king, you know. That's how the king was supported and all that stuff. So, um, today, what has led to the fall of this approach? What has led to the fall of this approach? It's very simple. Governance. Governance. That's the introduction, the imposition of a Western-style government upon our country. The imposition of the Western government standard. Now, if you're in a selfishness, in you know, a Zambia, selfishness. Because when the British left Zambia, they left a transitional document. A constitution, what they call the constitution. It was just, it was not even, a, it, it was, a, it, it was a, an act of parliament on England. It was actually a product of a statutory, a statutory in, instrument issued under the Zambia Independent. Independence Act of 1964. It, it was a product of, it was drafted under a statutory instrument or order in council issued by the Queen of England under the authority of the Zambia Independence, Independence Act of 1964. So that was a scheduled document that they left us for a transition so that we could now sit down ourselves and craft our own constitution and determine how we were going to self-govern. So that was a transitional document. Say, okay, in, in the meantime, you can have this because you don't want a vacuum. You don't want a vacuum. You still have, you, need, you still need structure until you get yourself a new constitution. But because of greed, again, the nature of man, greed, we never got to make our own constitution. We, we kept this thing because it carried so much power for the Zambian leader because it gave him the same powers as the governor general during the colonial. Those powers that were used by the governor general to put down the locals, to, crank, to, to, no, 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 to, to, to crack down on, on, on anything, any uprising from the locals. Those powers. Those powers were now in the president of Zambia. 
and they have continued to be like that to today. So what has what has happened here? What has shifted us? What has she, what has dissolved or diluted the um, the our attachments to where we come from? Our attachments to our villages and things like that. One is the English language, uh, the 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 the, the, um, the uh, formal business language of the Zam of Zambia shall be English. The moment that happened, it started to destroy us, destroy our culture, because every person now in Zambia thinks that English is superior to our local languages. And in case you didn't realize it, language, language is power. Language determines who you are, really, as a person, it determines your thought process. If you are a member, you have never heard about English, the culture, culture is the fabric of culture rests within the language. And it's, it forms the schemas, what, what, what are known as the schemas in your brain that determine really your behavior, how you perceive, your very perception of your world, the perception of your world is determined by your, by, your, by, by your language bank. Your language bank. From Umuchinshi, respect, from who you respect, what you respect, how you, are, how you are expected to behave at a certain point, all that is strongly tied to language. The moment someone comes and introduces another language, imposes another language on you, and your language begins to dissolve, you begin to change. Your culture begins to dissolve, to dilute. You know, and uh, this is what has been happening to Zambia. When you have every person, oh, is 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 uh, superior to you. Why is is superior to you? Meaning the way even the white skin is is superior to you. Everything now Western because they imposed on us a Western style type government, a Western style government. Everything Western elevates you above others. Everything Western elevates you above others. You covet Western things. You covet English. You covet uh, a Western style of life. Therefore, I'm alighting. Therefore, I didn't quite an internet. Therefore, I didn't quite a sunshine. Everyone wants those things. So, what has happened? What has happened is we have lost our attachment to to uh, we have lost our attachment to our to our to our uh, to our uh, you know to our homelands, our chiefdoms, and, uh, and 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 things like that. And because of the incompetence of government today. People are so heavily taxed. Zambians are, are the most heavily taxed people on the planet. You are so heavily taxed that how would you manage, even if you wanted to, to go to a village and go and give something to a king when you can't support your own child, when you don't have anything to eat? How are you going to, how are you going to do that? How would you take Naninkane if you would take you? you you, are, you can't manage yourself. You find the chief with a, with a Mercedes Benz parked outside the palace. How are you going to do that? Development. Oh, you need, to be of the, you need to develop villages. Development of a village, sure. It is premised within the constructs of traditional culture, traditional values. The transcendent values that, that are passed on. Each, each strength uh, rests within the uh, traditional within the traditional mind within the traditional mindset within the traditional mindset within our schemas within the determination of 
language, language of who we are as a people. If you are a Bemba, if you are in Mwanga, the language that you speak, what forms you? And out of that forms the way of life of a people, comes the way of life of a people. How you are going to conduct yourself, how you are going to treat the king, how you are going to treat your queen and uh, their de descendants, EDC. That's the development of, uh, that's uh, traditional development, you know. So in that setting, sure, you can say, well, we need to pay homage to the king. We need to pay homage to the king, the king, this and this and this. You know, you take care of your king. If you are talking about modern development, no one person can accomplish that. A village cannot accomplish that on its own. We in a country that has a Western style government. Who, who, where, do, where does the chief get the authority from to, to, uh, to, to, to implement a police force? Hmm? And what power does that police force has in a system that is Westernized already? Where, would they, where do they take the work? It, it, it doesn't work like that. That kind of development is still the responsibility of the government. The, only the government can bring hospitals there, bring uh, clinics or something, bring schools, bring social amenities to the rural area. You see, those are responsibilities of the gov of government. Those are the role of government. Because people in the villages also pay taxes. Most of the stuff that they're using in the villages now are not produced in the village. They have to come from outside. And if they come from outside, they, they, come, they carry along with the tax. And the villages, whatever they buy, they have to pay tax. They consume sugar. They consume, uh, they wear clothes. They wear shoes. They... There is so much stuff. In the villages are no longer what they used to be. They, they are no longer what they used to be. They have been destroyed. And it goes back to a, to, a foolish, to a foolishness of our governance systems that never sought, at any time never sought to, even Kaunda tried. With a, you know, he had, he had programs like the go back to the land, you know, go back to the land. That was a rural, the rural repatriation program, you know, Kaunda was trying. The rural repatriation at, at the time that we were, we were experiencing the maximum, the, the greatest, you know, urban, urbanization, urban migration, you know. And there was something wrong. People should not have been moving to the cities like that because there was nothing, something missing in the villages, you know. And today, it's all urban. You don't live in the urban, you are, not, you are nothing. Everything is wasted. You have to emulate the United States. You have to emulate the British. You have to emulate the Australians. You have to emulate the white man. You covet the white man. Sometimes I'm speaking this English. It's, 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 kind of, it's kind of shameful. It's, it's actually shameful that I have to speak English. You know, so that thing that I'm going to focus on the dream, but check, check, you know, so, so, um, we have 73 tribes in Zambia. We, we now we could have made one of them as official, our official language or two of them, Bemba and Lozi, official language, all three. You know, Canada has two official languages Canada has French and English. Why? Because there were two peoples in there, they, they, they were the French originally and the, 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 the English were there. So they say we are going to make these two languages the main language, the official languages, you know. So our, our, we have destroyed ourselves in that regard, you know. We have destroyed ourselves, and uh, the only way we can ever fix this is if our governance, if when we develop our own constitution, and provide in that constitution. Because we don't have a constitution right now that is ours, we develop a new, craft our own constitution. Because if we have any, if we have any, we know ourselves. We know we, we are Zambians. We know where we come from. We know what our heritage is. So we are able to craft into that constitution pro provisions, <coughs> excuse me, 
provisions that protect our heritage, which means that provides for frameworks that preserve the, chief, the chiefdoms and protect chiefs from being used for political reasons and protect chiefs, prevent chiefs from becoming crooked. You are not going to respect a crooked king or a chief. A, a chief who's getting bribes from government in order to influence these, these people to vote for the party or something, that's a crooked king. You respect Ilapua. Oh, Infumi. Infumi. Infumi never even seen his business. Go to traditional ceremonies today. It's, it's actually pathetic when you go to tra tra traditional ceremonies today. It, it, it's not even worth it. Maybe the, the, the best one is the Kuomboka. Hey, Moneka Fiat. Okay, this is tradition. They really want to keep and preserve what we have. Go to the Ngoni or these traditional value audience. What's that? Seriously? Infum we need Mercedes Benz. Infum. Traditional ceremony. Ceremony. I want to go and, and uh, see a traditional ceremony. Why? You are looking forward to seeing a, a chief being carried on, you know, on, those, on those platforms, you know, by the warriors being carried on those platforms. Yes, then I saw him from. Mercedes-Benz. A chief on top of Mercedes-Benz. No more warriors. You are calling. 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 It's so stupid, man. It's really stupid. It's we, we we've just lost our culture. We are such we have such beautiful culture, and we are just letting it slip through our hands. We are losing who we are. We are losing who we are, people. Seriously. Now, sure, the damage has been caused to us by the English language. The damage has been caused, but with the right constitution. I think we can fix. They still can, we can fix many of these things. A constitution is a very powerful document. A constitution is a very powerful document. It can redirect the culture of our land. That's what I'm telling you. A constitution can redirect the culture of our land. Just the same way as the stupid thing that we follow as the constitution is, has been redirecting the culture of our land. We are now being shifted towards the Western cultures. And since we, since we can't really get there because English is not our native language, you can never really think the same way as someone who was born in an, an English-speaking country, who was born in the United Kingdom, a, a native English person. Because from, from when they were born, the only thing they knew was English. So their thinking is formed by the language, the language, the structure of the language itself. The schemas in their, uh, you know, minds is formed by the language. So if you just learn language and stuff, stuff like that, in English, and you live in Zambia, in Zambia, if you, you were never born in those Typically, English-speaking countries. You were born in Zambia, and you learn English, and you pick it up, and all that stuff. You can never think like a person who who was born in those countries. You just can't. Because why? Because the language is inconsistent with what's around you. When you are born a Bemba. You are born in a, couch, in a culture that is structured around that language and everything, all the things that the people do, manners, uh, ways of life and everything is around that. So when you are born a Bemba, when you are growing up, you are seeing the language, how the language translates into behaviors, things. Oh, this word is this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. That's how language shapes you as a person. How it... How it you know, forms your perception of the, of, of the world, you know. So if you are 
Growing up, I don't know if you think you can never think the same way as someone who was born in that English, who was typically English. Because your English language is incompatible with everything. So it becomes someone, something else. It forms something else. That is neither you nor the English. So you essentially are lost. That's the power of these things. And that is why, that is how the English, the colonizers came to confuse us. Because they planted the language. They, come to, they came to, you know, uh, confuse our languages. That's what they did. So, you know, so a constitution can fix this. A carefully con uh, crafted constitution can fix this. I.e., you, you can change the national language. Phase it out over 10 years. Or phase it out over 20 years. Over 20 years, you phase out the language. Uh, there's nothing superior about the English language. There's nothing superior about it. There's nothing superior about it. You know, the, the Japanese don't speak English. They're, it's the most developed country in the world. Japanese don't speak English. The only reason that English is all over the world, seems to be all over the world, is because of the selfishness of those people, the English. Because they wanted to go around the world to get everything for themselves. That's the reason that English is, is, is all over the world. It's because it's out of selfishness. It's not because it's the best language on the planet. No, it's because the source of language, the people, the owners of the language are selfish. They wanted to enslave the entire world. That's why it's around all over the place. It's not around the, around the world because it's a, superior, it's a superior language. It is not a superior language. So you have the Japanese that speaks Japanese. They don't even have, they don't even understand English. Many of them don't understand English. But they developed. The Chinese don't speak English. The French they don't speak English in France. It's a developed country. Go to Poland, they speak Polish. Go to the Netherlands. You know, all these countries in Europe, they don't speak, they don't speak English. So, this is so coming back to, this is coming back to Mr. Lungu here. You need to understand. He said, these are responsibilities of government. Government, go and build palaces. It's a Western style system. Uh, if if a chief, if you consider a chief an institution, then it's your responsibility as government to build him a palace. If it's an institution, then you have to build him a palace. It's a role of government. If it's not an institution, then the king would have all the powers to rule there without any interference from the government. Then he can collect his own taxes from his subjects in his chiefdom. And those taxes can build the palace, they can build, and they, they could probably do even better than the government. <laughs> so, uh, so, our oh, president, don't, don't, don't talk about these things. Uh, it's just annoying. But, um, yeah, I, 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 know, I, I know this one of our uh, a lady here, uh, the YouTuber called Leading Times, Gelo Wapa said, you know, uh, she said something about, about this. She, she was of the position that um, um, Mr. Lungu was right. Uh, she, she, she got a lot of um, hateful feedback from a lot of Zambians, you know, it was, un it, it was unwarranted, you know, don't, you, don't, you don't have to be so unkind, you know, it, it, uh, she be, she's, she's been in the, in the forefront of, you know, uh, you know, supporting the Zambian youth as far as changing governments, uh, 
and stuff like that. She 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 she's playing playing a, a big role uh, to give a platform to um, a lot of youth in Zambia, youth in Zambia in general, and um, and uh, it, it, it's it's what she's been is what she's been doing with her platform is significant. So you know. Uh, yeah, now that it, it, it doesn't mean that she'll be right all the time. She's a human being. She 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 doesn't know everything. It doesn't mean that she'll be she'll be she'll be right all the time. Uh, but that does not say that that does that that does not mean you you insult her, guys. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that at all. It does not mean you insult her. Essentially, she's of the she's of the pos position that um, uh, individuals or all, all of us as individuals are responsible for developing our our own villages. So. That, that's that's the, that's the position that she had. So and she supported Mr. Lungu in that in that um, in his statement. So, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it, it's more it's more complicated than that. It's not it's not it's not the individual's responsibility to, to develop a village. It depends on what const, one, it depends on what context we are speaking in, and uh, the times. Zambia has changed. Zambia has changed, and not not for the better, for the worse, because a departure from who we are, the people that used to take care of our kings, or whether or not the uh, the kings got tax collectors or something like that, it's, it's still we are paid homage and all that stuff. If you come into a king, the, uh, the king's um, a kingdom, somebody's kingdom, you know, you have to pay you you have to pay homage to the king. If you went there for a long time and you come back, sure, you have to pay homage for the to the king, but. Things have changed. Things have been so damaged in Zambia. We have been so damaged culturally that that chiefs are not the chiefs that chiefs that we knew, you know. A chief that rides on top of a Mercedes Benz to me is not a chief. I'm sure all of you would agree. A chief, you don't expect a chief to be riding on top of a Mercedes, of a Mercedes Benz. People came from all over the world to see, to see our traditional ceremonies. Now, they, why would anybody come from overseas to come and see a chief riding in, in a Mercedes Benz? Riding in a more expensive vehicle than they can ever afford in their countries. Why would somebody come, come, come all that way to see that? Makes no sense whatsoever. You know, so uh, Mr. Lungu, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, this, that's a government job, uh, but... Um, In, in 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 short, uh, we, we can fix this, though. Even if we fix it, though, it, it's not it it cannot go back to you know people have to people have to start building palaces for chiefs. No, it, it can't go back to that. The constitution, a new constitution, if we come up with one, and which we should, should should create a framework within which chiefs chiefs. I said chiefs, <laughs> yeah, Thief, thieves, chief, chiefs. <laughs> the constitution would have to provide for a framework within which chiefs can have, you know, can you reclaim some of their, you know, um, decency and respect and reverence that they once commanded under them. You know. And uh, this thing about you know, uh, 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 chiefs driving Mercedes Benz, I don't know if it, this would will ever help. Because for me, a traditional chief, I cannot, I cannot imagine seeing myself a, a, a chief Riding in a Mercedes Benz and wearing, uh, you know, expensive suits as a chief, I don't, it's no longer a chief to me. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't like. I want to see a chief in traditional attire, but no. But anyway, that was my comment. My <laughs> bantu. Ah, uh, we are in Tanshi bantu, guys. Uh, you can subscribe, subscribe to my channel for more comments, but um. That's the that that was my